So now what's happening in a boom? You see it's going to be totally different. So let's reuse the same diagram in a boom. Let's change page. So that's a time with a high labor demand. Okay, so let's draw the same diagram, y-axis, x-axis, h. So we have our pipeline, zero employment. On the x axis. We have the labor force participation, labor supply. So, similarly as before, I'm going to draw my labor demand, but now. The so boom, the demand is high, so I'm going to push it much further out compared to before. Every time I'm going to push it here. And the of theta plus G. So, as usual. Here we have our original tightness in equilibrium, original employment, and of course, original employment. Okay, so now um, let's consider an increase Increase in public employment DG. Okay, so what's going to happen if we increase public employment? The labor aggregate labor demand is going to shift out by some quantity. Uh, so let's say starting from the equilibrium position, we can increase let's say increase public employment by DG like this. So the labor demand, aggregate labor demand has to shift parallel to this point. Okay. Uh, okay. So the uh, the labor demand now move like this. So this is N D of theta plus G plus D G as per as per um, usual. Okay. Uh, but what we see now is that because the labor supply is so steep, the increase in tightness is actually um, quite large uh, in equilibrium. So uh, initially, if tightness hasn't changed, we would have moved to this point here. Okay, uh, but what we can see is that in equilibrium, of course, the tightness is not the same. Now we have a new tightness that's like this. The D theta here is quite large just because uh, the labor supply is so steep. Okay, so in equilibrium, we have now we're in a part where you really have to increase tightness uh, in equilibrium. Here we have theta plus D theta. Okay, 
And so as a result, the prodding out that we have is going to be quite large. Um, so and the prodding out leads from this point here, and in fact, because tightness goes up, firms, private firms reduce employment, so there's crowding out. And we move, you know, along this level of demand all the way to that point, to reach that equilibrium. And so this distance here, so this, this distance here, That's the, pro the amount of crowding out, so that's D, L, D, which is negative. That's the reduction in labor demand here, which is quite large. Um, and so, in fact, here we can see that the reduction in labor demand eats up, in private labor demand, eats up almost all of the increase in aggregate labor demand caused by the increase in public hiring. And so, um, So now if I want to look at the total increase in employment, so increase in public employment net of the decrease in private employment, it's only the small quantity here. Oops. So this is DL. So DL is still positive. We know the, the multiplier is always positive. We know that employing hiring workers in the public sector always has a positive effect on employment but that effect here is very small because most of the gains in employment due to having more workers in the public sector are, are eaten up by the reduction in workers in the private sector so basically in good times what happens is that you know when unemployment i mean it makes sense right when un imagine unemployment is zero if there are no unemployed workers, all the workers that move to the public sector, they have to come from somewhere because there are no unemployed. So they have to come from the private sector. So in a world in which there is no unemployment, any time you hire workers in the public sector, well, you're going to take them away from the private sector just because you know there is no unemployment. The pool of uh, workers is fixed at age, the size of the labor force. And so any workers you had to the public sector goes away from the private sector. So you know, in a world like this, you have a multiplier of zero and you have full crowding out. And so you, you cannot stimulate employment by hiring workers in the public sector. Because you know, there's, there's no unemployment. Everybody who wants to work is already there in the labor force. So public employment will have no effect. And so in good times, it's not as extreme as this, as the situation I've just described, but it's close to it. You can see that the labor supply is, is quite steep. So when you boost um, aggregate labor demand by stimulating public employment, you're going to increase a lot of tightness, and that's going to uh, lead to a big reduction in um, private employment that almost completely negates the increase in public employment. So the, the net effect is that the increase in total employment is not very big, as we see here. So the conclusion from this is that in good times, uh, the multiplier lambda, which is dl dg, is small. That's the conclusion. Just because the dl uh, that we have here is so small, uh, whereas before, if we go up, the L that we had here was so big, you know, because the increase in tightness was very small, whereas here the increase in tightness um, that we showed here is quite large. Okay, uh, so that's what happened. So at the end, you know, the, the geometry of it, it all comes from the shape of the labor supply, that it's flat in, in kind of high unemployment regions and very steep in low unemployment region. And that comes from the, how the matching process works and how congestion uh, works, okay? So as a result, in boom, increasing public employment is not a very effective way to reduce unemployment further. In, in bad times, in slum, it's a very effective way to reduce unemployment, okay? And indeed, um, there is a 
you know, actually um, quite a growing literature, a fast growing literature that studies um, how multipliers vary over the business cycle. And there is a lot of evidence now building up both in the US and uh, in other countries that multipliers are bigger in bad times than in good times. And it's very hard to explain that with typical models, but with a matching model that we've been studying, actually, it's very natural. In a model like this, in which you have you know, Slack that features at the center, here yes, Slack is, you have unemployment, you have idle resources, then you can, very, you can explain this multiplier finding very easily. Bad times are times with a lot of Slack, a lot of idle resources, and so when the, here the government steps in to employ some of these resources, it has very little effect on the private sector. Good times are times with very little idleness, very little slack. So when the government enters to use idle resources, it takes these resources away from the private sector because there's almost no slack. That's the story that you can see here. And that's what the empirical evidence seems to suggest as well. Um, and uh, so, you know, if you're interested in these things, there are uh, interesting studies looking at how multipliers vary over time, and there are a lot of new econometric techniques that are developed to try to test uh, the evolution of multiplier over the business cycle. The matching model is a very natural model. Uh, is a very natural model to explain why multipliers are larger in bad times than, than in good times. Why multipliers are um, counter cyclical. Um, 